Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In this lesson, number 49, we'll take a look at what is enterprise architecture. When we think about enterprise architecture, we usually think about very large multinational or international companies. But enterprise architecture really applies to those companies, of course, but also larger localized companies, even smaller companies, or believe it or not, even a group of teams. All the context of enterprise architecture that I'm going to show you in this lesson really applies to all four of these kind of contexts, big or small. When we think about what enterprise architecture is, let's take a look at how a typical business is really structured. Because we have the business strategy and operating model, which produces something called business needs. Then we have operations and IT and infrastructure, where most of us are down at the, that area. And this produces IT capabilities. And the problem in most companies is the fact that trying to match the business needs with the IT capabilities that we are producing in technology is like putting a square peg in a round hole. Very rarely do these two match up. And so let's see how enterprise architecture fits within this context. Because between the business strategy and operating model and those operations, IT systems, and the infrastructure is enterprise architecture. It fits right in between these. Now, within enterprise architecture, we have several things. We have guiding architecture principles and standards, those guidelines that we use within architecture. We also have business and IT capability models. We've certainly got governance programs within enterprise architecture, including architecture review boards. And finally, that overall enterprise architecture strategy about the approach approach and communication models within the enterprise to bridge these. Now you might think, wait a minute, that's not how we define enterprise architecture. Well, all of these lead into something which most people actually call enterprise architecture, which is really called ETA, Enterprise Technical Architecture. And this includes all of those modelings, those roadmaps, those uh, current state, the future state, uh, three-year roadmaps. All of that is with enterprise technical architecture. And one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of companies make is to start focusing on all that modeling, the prioritization models, uh, the road mapping models, without realizing what the input to those actually are. Now, we're not quite done with this really horrible diagram because what we have is really strategy at the operating and business strategy model, planning and design all the way down to execution. Enterprise architecture is really that planning and design. And then there's the feedback loop going up. Now, this is kind of a, I'll say, a comprehensive diagram. But let's try to simplify it a little bit to really gain a context of enterprise architecture. Let's say that I would love to run the Boston Marathon. Now, that would be a personal goal to run the marathon. So if I want to run the marathon next year, what do I do? Well, the first thing I do is I can kind of analyze my lifestyle, my fitness, my ability, and realize quickly that there is a very large gap between wanting to run a marathon and having the ability, the lifestyle, the fitness to be able to do that. But if that's really a personal goal of mine, what do I do? And what most of us would do is I develop a workout plan to start saying every week I'm going to run two miles every day. And then I start upping that to 2.2 miles the next week. And then maybe I take a week off and work on some other aspect of maybe eating healthier. But the point is I have a workout plan to reach that goal. And this is very, very natural. What in the world does this have to do with enterprise architecture? Well, let's take that personal goal and let's make it some sort of business goal. For example, to be the number one online insurance company in the nation. Then what do I do? As a company, I analyze my operating model, my infrastructure, my IT capabilities. And from the goal over to the capabilities I have, that forms a gap. Now in business, we generally don't have a workout plan, but this is exactly where EA fits in, enterprise architecture.
You see, when we take a look at enterprise architecture, the one single thing, the most important thing about enterprise architecture in terms of the goals is really to facilitate change. As a matter of fact, if there were no change in business, we really wouldn't need enterprise architecture. But businesses undergo change all the time. Consider this town, which kind of starts out way in yesteryear. There's not much infrastructure here. There's a couple of telephone poles I can see, maybe, maybe some sewer pipes or water pipes, but not much infrastructure. But as towns grow, as our companies grow, all of a sudden, we need all this complex infrastructure, all that technology, and there's a lot of planning and strategy that goes in to creating a city like this. That's where enterprise architecture fits in. That's the primary goal. It's really to facilitate that change. But there's five other kind of sub-goals. The first is really to provide that strategic architectural vision and direction. This is what enterprise architects do. They also lead the architectural transformation and organizational change that comes about from business initiatives. The third thing is really to ensure that capabilities match between what IT capabilities we're providing and what the business needs actually are. The fourth thing is really to establish those architecture and process governance practices. And finally, to really communicate those goals, metrics, and value of what we're doing across the organization. Now, we do a lot of this modeling and all sorts of stuff within enterprise architecture, but our real outcome, when we start to think about what really is the purpose of enterprise architecture, and it's to facilitate and lead and guide change. And as a result, the major deliverable, the output out of any enterprise architecture effort is a consolidated roadmap which shows us how to get to where we want to go. And in this roadmap, we may have certain iterations that are fairly macro level, by the way. We may have business segments or different kinds of systems or services or applications. And then we identify the projects that are needed. These projects that we identify as enterprise architects are usually what application or solution architects get at a system level to facilitate one part of the change in an overall program. And as a matter of fact, if we look at the kind of initiatives that an enterprise architect would do or that fall under the scope of enterprise architecture, it would be things like this. For example, the need or desire uh, or requirement to leverage technology to reduce all the manual processes that we have to increase efficiency. That might be one kind of initiative to better co uh, control costs within the organization, particularly with technology and infrastructure. Notice these are spanning multiple teams, multiple departments, multiple divisions. Uh, gain better control of the uh, data across the organization to eliminate all the redundancy and to increase accuracy. Uh, another initiative might be to increase our competitive advantage and market share and to increase our customer base. Some of that is business, but some of that is technology and changes to our systems, to our infrastructure, uh, all the way over to applications for that matter. And as a matter of fact, some of the decisions that fall within an enterprise architecture st scope might be things like should we leverage a cloud-based infrastructure within our organization? That might be based on particular initiatives that we saw just a little bit ago. Should we create financial reports from the accounting system or directly from the data warehouse? These are questions that business has that we need to facilitate as enterprise architects. How do we integrate between two heterogeneous platforms? And based on our requirements and budget, should we build or buy? And finally, which systems should we migrate first, accounting or customer systems? These are the kind of decisions that we make within enterprise architecture to help facilitate those business initiatives. This really is what enterprise architecture is all about at any level. A multinational company all the way to a small division or a group within a large company. All right, so we'll be looking at a couple of other aspects of enterprise architecture in the next three lessons over the next three Mondays. But for more information, certainly you can go to Software Architecture Monday 
which is on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. And also uh, see where I'm going to be speaking at uh, public training or conferences or even online training at my website at developer2architect.com slash upcomingeventshtml. So this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 49, What is Enterprise Architecture? Again, my name is Mark Richards. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next three Mondays where we'll be talking a little bit more about enterprise architecture.